morning. Why is it that every, it seems like every Friday now, I got to open up and talk to you about some horrific story before we get into the into the movies, and here we go again. It's the worst. Is it? Well, I mean, you know, hey, let's face it. We're in a war, okay, and it's a war that America has never seen before. Yeah. It's a terrorist war. And, yet, yes, this is happening in France right now, but we're having incidents here in America, and you know, we're seeing a, a, type of, a type of enemy that we're not that familiar with, the one that ju- doesn't want to conquer an entire city, not the one that wants to conquer an entire country, one that just wants to scare you at every turn yeah. and inflict little damages here and there in order to you know, maybe sway public opinion or at least get revenge over the course of 100 years. And, and you know, I got to tell you, uh, yesterday I was speaking to someone, this whole thing was going down, and they're like, boy, you know, this is Obama. And um, I, I, my answer to that is yes, and it's George Bush, and it's Bill Clinton, and and you could go back even you could go back even further. Uh, remember how Clinton would respond to um, issues like uh, Saddam Hussein? He'd just lob off some bombs and uh, and send some bombs over there, and sometimes they'd be accurate, and sometimes they'd blow up a, a residential section. But it's years of American foreign policy that has led to this hatred and 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 it's not I, I i it's not a fixable problem right now i don't think we can walk in and, and correct this with a with any war action i mean you have to find these people and kill them but how do you find them right you you cannot find every single person who wants to destroy america and get them you just can't and and you know this is a war and remember when you do that the next generation and the generation after that now picks up the fight. Because yeah. you're, you're right, this is not a fight that goes back, you know, one or two presidents. We're talking about a fight that goes back, you know, decades, centuries. You know, it, 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 it's not anything that we've we've ever really been familiar with or lived through. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm I, I'm you, you just look and you know that more of this type of thing is going to hit the United States. It's just it, it's inevitable. <laughs> I'm shocked it hasn't hit it more I already. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right. Well, listen, there's two movies uh, that are featured. First of all, the Ghostbusters. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, oh, this... you know, this is the movie that we were talking about this a little bit earlier this week. It's bringing the gender wars to Hollywood. You know, it seems like every review I read, women think it's great. They love the girl power. Men hate it. They think it's humorless. And it turns out it's just kind of in the middle. It's just kind of blah. You know, there isn't really a plot to follow or a plot that's all that important. You know, it's, it's this, this guy who's kind of a loner, kind of a genius, who wants to bring the ghost world to Manhattan to destroy everybody that's wronged him, and the Ghostbusters have to try to stop it. But it, The movie is really more about, let's introduce these four women, let's introduce these four comedic actresses, and have them do goofy things, and we'll make lots of references to the first movie. You're going to hear a familiar your theme song at the beginning of the movie. You're going to see a familiar car. You're going to see some familiar ghosts. You're even going to see all the stars from the first movie showing up here in little cameos. But ultimately, the four have to stand on their own, and two of them do and two of them don't. And it's the supporting characters that are much funnier and much better than, than anybody else in this movie. You, Kristen Wiig, I'm sorry, I think she's letting this I'm a comedic genius thing go to her head. Mm. She's not good in this movie. She's horrible in this movie. It's like she's a step behind everybody else. And, and Melissa McCarthy, I think, is a very funny woman. But you know, she just kind of gets lost in the shuffle here in this movie. Both of them were funny in Bridesmaids. Was that what the uh, the movie? Yeah, they were both in yeah. Bridesmaids, and they were both great there. And, Everybody and, walked you know, away they... saying, genius, these two are just <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. But that doesn't pay very well. So you have, to, you have to milk it for all it's worth until finally you're doing some sitcom on ABC on Friday nights, okay? <laughs> so, uh, what, are you, what are you giving it? I'm going to say two waffles. I, I think it, it's kind of funny. The action is pat and barely passable, but you're going to like Leslie Jones. You're going to like Kate right. McKinnon, and it's fun to see all the original stars because they give them the best lines. The real big movie that I, I want to know about is uh, I've been watching the series on either Netflix, HBO, Showtime. I don't know who has it, but uh, on the drug wars and Escobar and all of that. And this is what this movie is about. It's called The Infiltrator, and it's a true story. And Brian Cranston is in it, right? 
Yeah, Brian Cranston plays this uh, you know customs agent in Florida who decides we're we're going about the battle against Pablo Escobar completely wrong. We shouldn't be going after the cocaine. We should be going after the money. And so you know because he's got a background in understanding IRS rules and, and how money is handled and how money is laundered, he launches this sting operation where he's working undercover and in danger at every moment. And that's the thing you want to see because he's so good at you know showing you this situation where you know. Anything can happen at any moment. Any yeah. moment could be his last one. And that tension and that fear, but also the way that he's got to overcome it and just become this bigger-than-life figure in order to lure in the Escobar people. I think there's a lot of cliche moments, but his performance is amazing. He's I'm a great three waffles. Wow, I can't wait. I, I, I really want to see this movie. He did. So, he played Johnson uh, in that recent series I that was missed up. It. Oh, yeah, my God, I, he was, I gotta go back and check that he out. He was good. And this guy is an actor, Brian Cranston. All right, Infiltrator, uh, three waffles, great. Gotta get out and see it. Willie, enjoy the weekend. Wafflemovies.com before you go to the movies. Thanks. All right, we'll talk to you later. Uh, by the way, the official coffee of the Keeler in the Morning radio program is Daylight Donuts in New Hartford and Washington Mills. Chuck at Daylight, it's the best coffee. WIBX Utica, Rome, it's 7 o'clock.